Hello, Tungsten Miner here. I am carrying on with some improvements to my keep. So uh, since we've last talked, I've pretty much finished everything off. I want to show you a few of those things and then talk about what the next expansion looks like. So let's jump in. Okay, here I am standing outside and uh, you can see I've got this pillar with a gold block and a banner, which means of course it's protecting a region. And if I hit my F3 key, you can see there's another one over there, there's another one over there. So I've basically extended my protection by adding eight more banners with blocks around the outside edges of the keep. And the whole point of this is that I keep getting invasions really right up against the walls of the keep and I was kind of getting a little tired of it. So one, these protect from invasions spawning within that region. And two, uh, while I'm standing out here, I will show you the expansion that I'm trying to do. Uh, the notion here is that I've kind of run out of room for things like agriculture on the inside of that wall up there, because honestly, there just wasn't that much room to begin with. So the idea is that I'm standing at level 117, which is exactly 10 meters below the level of the ground up in the proper part of the keep. And if we look at the map here, we can kind of sort of see the outline of what I have in mind. So you can see this keep proper. You can see where my red arrow is right in the center. And if you look very, very carefully, there's this dotted white line that is all of these concrete cobble blocks, concrete uh, gondor cobble blocks that I've got all around the outside edges here. And what these do is pretty much trace out the extent of where elevation 117 naturally occurs all around the area of the keep. And if we look at the map, we can see that the contour lines show us that there's kind of these plateaus or terraces almost naturally built into the hilltop. So what I'm doing is I'm extending the base outward to include the next terrace, basically. And the plan is I've uh, outlined this area and I've kind of laid out where all these cobble blocks need to be. Um, and that's going to define where the wall goes and I've got my banners around the outside edges. So this area plus a lot of area around the outside is also protected. And then I'm going to flatten out this area pretty much the same way that I did in the inner part of the keep itself. So you can see what I wound up doing is carving back the terrain so that everything has no more than a one meter step to get up to the next level, or at least it does around the bottom. I didn't change much after that. So that gives me a little bit of a natural kind of crest to the hill, but it also gives me some flat area to work with. And what I've done out here is set up a little bit of a farm. So using holly uh, for fence and gates, I've taken my harvest craft seeds, such as I have them, and uh, planted them all in here, and then planted olive trees around the outside edge. I still haven't figured out why this particular one isn't growing. All the rest of these are the same distance away and they all managed to grow, but well, that one didn't. Uh, so for my scarecrows, I'm using Gondor Rock and just a skeleton skull at the top. So that gets me pretty much all of the stuff here. I have finished this, which I think was already done in the last video, but I've been adding some more armor as I've come across it. Uh, this is the autumno armor that the uh, orcs uh, wear down there. In the last video, you could see I was going around and collecting quite a lot of this stuff. And as it turns out, I did manage to get a full set. Uh, and this is a set of Corsair armor because, well, those Corsairs keep coming around. I've planted a silverwood tree on the outside here. And uh, fortunately, it developed a node in the center. So now I've got that. And I've brought along the cows and chickens that I had at my um, my farm back in Hobbiton, or Overhill rather. Uh, unfortunately, most of the chickens have managed to escape because they can walk down here and open up that door and they wander off into the countryside. So I'm going to have to uh, find some more chickens, I'm afraid. Fortunately, I've got a couple left, so it shouldn't be too, too bad. Uh, but I've got most of my cows, and this is the one rhino that I managed to rescue, but I'm going to get back to rhinos in a bit. In here, I have uh, changed up all my ladders so that they're now all Malorn wood ladders, uh, which is quite nice. And uh, over here, I wanted to show off something I walked right by. 
uh, yeah, you can kind of see inside my tower here, I brought my hobbit farmer along. Haven't given her anything to do yet, so she just kind of hangs out in this tower. But I've got all of my bushes, all of my saplings for various plants. I've got all my different seeds all kind of laid out in here. So there's my camel. Found him on a trip to the south as well. Inside, I have finished laying out my brewing room, switched over to using storage drawers, both because they can hold a fair bit of stuff, uh, several times more, in fact, than just plain shelves, but also because they have this nice visual display also, which allows me to see what's in these different barrels. And I've been stacking those up as I go along. Over here, I have finished my netherwort farm, and I've installed, in fact, two of these arcane levitators because the each one gets you about 10 meters, and that wasn't quite high enough to get me to the top floor with just one of them. So as we go up, get onto this floor, I've got my infernal furnace, I've got my alchemy set up, which I believe I showed you back in uh, Overhill. It's pretty much the same setup, not really anything different here. Over here, I've got some bulk storage. Uh, this is an ethereal platform. So this is kind of a block that is trans... You, you can basically go right through it unless you're holding shift. Uh, well, and if you're not holding shift, you can stand on it. If you are holding shift, you go back down through it. So it's meant for use with these arcane levitators. Going up to the top floor here, I've got my wand recharging room. I have managed to collect all of my different nodes, so now I can completely recharge a wand from scratch. Haven't figured out what to do with this room yet. Over here, I've got my one energized aura node that I use for powering just the few machines that I have so far. Uh, this is my focal manipulator. I'll probably do a video on that in uh, the future. And I think that's pretty much it as far as new stuff here. Uh, I did extend this little walkway over to here so that it's a little easier to get around. That takes you back to the kitchen. That hasn't changed. Down here, I wanted to get to my crafting room. Okay, so here we are in the crafting room. Uh, not much has changed except these. That is a rhinoceros. That too is a rhinoceros. In fact, these are both rhinoceri that have very good health and fairly good speed. Of course, being rhinoceri, they don't jump, but those are the two stats we're really worried about. Uh, and what I intend to do is breed them. And that's kind of what led to this whole project is I need a stables that I can use for breeding rhinoceri and for keeping my various other animals. So my horses, camels, etc. And there's just not enough room uh, if we walk around the keep. So I've got maybe some room over here, but I'd kind of intended this for farm animals and or harvesting crops. And if we go over here, there's definitely not enough room for a stable on this side. Over here, there's maybe barely enough room, but I mean, honestly, we're talking about maybe a row of stalls with a little bit of a roof over their head. That's really not a lot of room for any sizable kind of stable. And then over here, we've got the front of the castle, which is pretty much all used up. So really not enough room anywhere in the grounds of the keep itself to be able to do something like rhinoceros breeding, which probably is going to require quite a lot of space. So that brings us down to the next uh, terrace of the hill. And like I said, I decided uh, I was going to go 10 meters down, find that level, and here I am standing at that level. The intention then is um, the road is going to come up here, and still this is the main way into the keep. This wall will be tall enough so you can't kind of get over, at least not uh, ordinary enemies can get over. Probably I'll have the road extend over here, branch off a little bit, and come up here and have a second gate that allows you to gain access to this terrace. At which point you can go through the underpass over here, or you can go around and go through the underpass over here. Uh, probably keep both of those. And the stables will probably go over here. 
And that way I can have a nice big, you know, this whole kind of end of this uh, little terrace will be the stables. And that gives me plenty of room back here for all sorts of other things. Uh, probably growing different kinds of trees, um, you know, various orchard sorts of plants, uh, gets me room for, whoops, I fell in a hole. Um, doing bigger gardens, if I think that's kind of useful, raising more animals, if I want to do that. Um, who knows? I'll no doubt find lots of things to do with the extra space once I have it. But uh, that should be plenty of room for my next level of expansion. Uh, this is kind of the other big corner over here. So I might, uh, I don't know, an exercise pen for animals outdoors? Who knows? I'll figure something out. Anyway, I think that's about it for now. I'm going to pause, go do some more work, maybe get this whole wall filled in, and then uh, be back with you in a moment. Okay, back again. I have finished getting the wall, this outermost wall, reinstalled around the outside edge. And I have dug down the terrain so that there's no point where you have to jump less than two meters to get up on top of the wall. Of course, that won't do much good against defending from arrows and spears and that sort of thing. But it will mean that any mobs or invaders, those darn corsairs, for example, won't be able to get up into this part of the grounds anymore. You can also see that I have trimmed back the grounds so that there's a one-to-one -one slope. Um, this kind of is necessary because here's an example of what it looks like beforehand. I've got maybe like five meters worth of space to work with here and I just need a little bit more room than that for most things that I want to do out here. So I'm going to do the same thing for this little piece over here and you can see I've completed a lot of the work for this front part of the castle here. Um, I've left things so that they're natural-ish looking. I liked the idea of it and I like the look of it for the keep portion. So I'm gonna do the same thing down here for the grounds. Uh, this, remember, is where the stable's likely to go. So I'm probably gonna carve this out a little bit more and make it so that it's a little easier to get through here on whatever mount I happen to have. Uh, remember, the thing that started this whole project was wanting to breed rhinos. So definitely gonna need to be able to fit through that opening. What I will probably do, well, overshot here, is um, I don't want enemies who might have an invasion spawn down here, for example, walking up the stairs, going up here, and then be able to just walk onto the grounds. So I'll probably elevate this just a bit more. Haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that, but I'm gonna make it so that there's enough of a wall on this step so that you can't just walk off this side into the grounds. This I'll probably leave as it is until it gets to about here, and then I'll give it the same treatment so that there's kind of a, a cordoned wall that takes you up this far, and you can't just walk off either side. I will, of course, flatten out the terrain down to about this 117 level, uh, following the same pattern of doing a one-to-one -one and leaving all of the blocks that are actually touching the walls in their natural positions to preserve that kind of randomly generated natural look of the terrain that I already have. Uh, remember, there's the lava trap that comes out of there. I'm uh, probably going to remove that because there's not much point. This is now secured ground. And honestly, the lava trap never really worked very well anyway. And now that I've got some pretty wicked magical tools, I don't really need it anyway. So I'm going to carry on clearing up all of this stuff, giving myself some more flat space to work with. And I should wind up with something very much like this all the way around the rest of the castle. I will probably finish up just by planting some temporary decorative trees so it's not completely empty out here. And we'll see what I get after that. Um, at that point, I'll be putting in buildings and farms and, well, whatever else occurs to me. Okay, I think I am done with the first stage of things, which is to say the leveling out of terrain and erecting a small wall. So as I showed you last time, this wall is now complete. It goes all the way around the entire grounds. What I have also done is to trim back all of the dirt and stone and gravel so that it all kind of is tight up against this wall and gives me as much flat ground as possible while still keeping the decline to a one-to-one -one slope. 
and you can see where I've just finished off this last little bit here and the grass hasn't quite grown back yet. The other thing I have done, obviously, is to plant a bunch of holly saplings, some of which have grown up, some of which have not. Uh, and that way I'll have a ring of holly saplings all the way around the outside edge of the lower grounds. Um, they'll probably go away at some point, um, or at least some of them will. But I figure this is a good place to start putting something down so there's not nothing down here. Uh, and if nothing else, the holly trees look kind of nice and they will uh, provide a little bit of a border, um, decorative border around the outside edge here while I think of what else to do with all of this space. But the next project, now that we've gotten back around, is obviously going to be working on some kind of stable over here for rhinoceros breeding. But more on that next time. That's it for now. Talk to you later.